They drew first blood, not me. Look, Johnny. Let me come in and get you the hell out of there. They drew first blood. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning, Will. What do you got? I want you to book this gentleman for vagrancy, resisting arrest, and carrying a concealed weapon. So why are you pushing me? I haven't done anything to you. First of all, you don't ask the questions around here. I do. We don't want guys like you in this town. Drifters. It's a quiet little town. In fact, you might say it's boring. But that's the way we like it. And I get paid to keep it that way. Holy shit, look at this. What the hell's he been into? I'm just gonna shave you, partner. Take it easy. It's... Oh! Don't move. down there. All right, get help. I'll go after him. They're telling to bring a Doberman. It's going to rain. We'll need dogs that can hunt on sight. Right. You sure pick one a hell of a guy to mess around with. John Rambo is a Vietnam vet. He's a Green Beret, Congressional Medal of Honor. Stand right where you are. Give yourself up. But I didn't do anything. I've come to get my boy. Your boy? I recruited him. I trained him. I commanded him in Vietnam for three years. I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. You're finished! You've gone as far as you're gonna go! This mission is over, Rambo. First Blood opened on the 22nd of October 1982 in the USA and arrived a month later in the UK on the 16th of November. Directed by Ted Kotcheff and produced on a modest budget of $15 million, it went on to make $125 million worldwide, becoming a huge success, and made a further $23 million from home video rentals. Many now consider First Blood one of the best movies of 1982 and a classic, but at the time critics weren't particularly keen on it. Many complained about its violence despite only one person dying in the film and its weak ending. Roger Ebert however praised its direction, pacing and Stallone's performance, but like many of the other critics wasn't pleased with how it ended. With First Blood's success it spawned three sequels, which will be discussed later, but also a cartoon series, video games and a range of toys. Rambo became an iconic character on the big screen, and remains just as popular today as Stallone's other famous role, Rocky. The movie was based on the popular novel of the same name by David Morrell that was published in 1972. It was a controversial book as it suggests the idea of the Vietnam War coming home to the USA. The writer intended to put across his own disapproval of war. Morrell said he was inspired to write the novel upon hearing about the experiences of his students who had fought in Vietnam. David Morrell said that one of the inspirations for Rambo was World War II hero Audie Murphy. The character's name was derived in part from the Rambo Apple, a supply of which the writer's wife brought home while he was trying to come up with a suitable name for his character. Columbia Pictures purchased the rights not long after the book was published for around $75,000. The studio tried to get it off the ground and spent a year working with a director, but the project fell apart. The movie rights were then picked up by Warner Brothers for a reported $125,000. Warner Bros had a number of actors in mind to play Rambo, such as Clint Eastwood and Robert De Niro. The script went through three different drafts, and still nothing was really happening with the production. Sidney Pollock considered doing it in late 1974 with Steve McQueen as Rambo. Steve liked the role and the anti-establishment nature of the character, and Burt Lancaster was considered to play the sheriff. However, ultimately the director at the time decided against it, and the producers who suggested McQueen realised he was too old to be a Vietnam veteran. By this point, four different directors had tackled the script, Richard Brooks, Martin Ritt, Mike Nichols and John Frankenheimer. They all struggled to create something that would work for them and for the studio. Mario Cazar and Andrew Vanya of Coralco brought the property from Warner Brothers for $375,000 and purchased the developed scripts. It was later estimated there were 18 versions of the script developed over the years as it jumped from studio to studio. 
Ted Kocheff had been approached with the project and took the role of director as Karako offered to finance one of his projects. Kocheff offered the role of John Rambo to Sylvester Stallone and the actor accepted the part after reading the script through a weekend. When it comes to the cast of First Blood, it's pretty small and really focuses around three characters, Rambo, the Sheriff and Troutman. Stallone's star power after the success of the Rocky films enabled him to rewrite the script to create more sympathy around the character of John Rambo. While Morrell's book has the Rambo character violently killing many of his pursuers, the other drafts developed by the other studios stuck with that level of violence. Stallone decided that Rambo should not directly cause the death of any police officers or National Guardsmen. There was still a slight reluctance around casting Stallone as the lead, as the other films he'd starred in outside of Rocky hadn't done well. For the role of Sheriff Teasel, the producers approached Academy Award winners Gene Hackman and Robert Duvall, but both turned the part down, and it eventually went to Brian Dennehy. Brian had been in a number of films beforehand, but hadn't really had much success, and First Blood will be the first one to really boost his career. In the movie, it hints at Teasel's past with war medals in his office, and on the audio commentary for the Blu-ray, the writer of the novel said he was in the Korean War, which reflects the nature of his character and his desire to go above and beyond the call of duty. Kirk Douglas was hired to play Colonel Troutman, but just before shooting began, Douglas quit the role after a script dispute. Richard Krenner was quickly hired as a replacement. The role of Troutman became the actor's most famous role, and he would star in Rambo 2 and 3, but sadly passed away in 2003, way before Rambo 4 was made. The film was shot in British Columbia, Canada in the winter, so all the scenes where you see Stallone freezing, it's all for real. Having to run around in just jeans and a t-shirt at very low temperatures is certainly not easy and not fun. The town scenes in the movie were shot in Hope, while the rest of the movie was shot in Golden Ears Provincial Park and Pit Lake and Pit Meadows. With Corral co-producing and financing the film themselves, they needed to find distributors to get their money back and to get the film out there. The producers cut together 50 minutes of action scenes that had been shot and showed it to international distributors who were blown away and they were all desperate to get their hands on the rights. This became Coralco's method of selling their films and gaining financing for their future productions. The rough cut of First Blood was over three hours long according to Sylvester Stallone. It was so bad that it made him and his agent sick. It's strange it made them feel ill. Maybe it was insanely dull at that length. Stallone wanted to buy the movie and destroy it thinking it would kill his career. Thankfully that didn't happen and the movie was heavily edited down to 93 minutes and that version was released theatrically. From then on all of the sequels came in at roughly the same runtime. The movie did stick with the original ending showing Rambo dying at the hands of Troutman but due to a poor test screening they had to change it and opt for a happy ending where Rambo survives. Test audiences felt let down after rooting for a character who is then killed off. Some criticised Coralco for wanting to keep him alive to make sequels, but they stressed they just wanted to keep audiences happy. The movie opens with Vietnam veteran John Rambo travelling by foot to meet one of his old friends. He hasn't seen him for seven years since being discharged, but Rambo learns that his friend has died due to cancer after being exposed to Agent Orange during the war. Rambo decides to continue with his journey and comes across a small town of hope. The town sheriff takes an instant disliking to Rambo, fearing he will cause trouble and takes him out of town, telling him not to return. Rambo clearly doesn't like the guy's attitude and ignores the sheriff's wishes and heads back to town. The sheriff spots him and arrests John on charges of vagrancy, resisting arrest and possessing a concealed weapon. As Rambo is checked in, Teasel's officers abuse John and he begins to have flashbacks to when he was a prisoner of war. He screams out in terror and lashes out, managing to fight his way outside the station. He grabs a motorbike and flees into the woods. Teasel organises a search party to recapture him and it is revealed that Rambo is a former Green Beret who received the Medal of Honor for his service. Art Galt, one of the main aggressors from the sheriff's office, spots Rambo from a helicopter and attempts to shoot him, but he misses and Rambo throws a rock in retaliation. It hits the helicopter causing Art to fall to his death. Rambo tries to persuade Teasel that it was an accident and that he wants no more trouble, but the police don't listen and open fire. Rambo is forced to escape into the woods with the officers in pursuit, but they don't realise Rambo has set up many traps to prevent them from tracking him. As a result they get injured and need to fall back. John corners Teasel with a knife to his throat and tells him to let it go or he will give him a war he won't believe.
The late Jerry Goldsmith composed a score to First Blood and also provided his talents on Rambo 2 and 3. Jerry is one of the best film composers that has ever lived, and when it comes to action scores with emotional element, Jerry always delivers, balancing out the action cues with the drama and sadness that comes with John Rambo's past. The movie opens with the familiar theme for Rambo titled It's a Long Road, which has this mournful sound to it. Jerry's music always ends up being a character in itself, making many of his scores stand on their own and very easy to listen to. It's always easy to picture the movie in your head when you've got the soundtrack on. My favourite tracks have to be The Mountain Hunt and The Razor. Both see the Rambo theme become this heroic march, and it works wonders when he's in the army truck and smashes through the police barricade to escape. At this point, Jerry was experimenting with synthesizers and mixing them into the score, but the electronic music never dominates the orchestral pieces, only complements it nicely to create an interesting new sound. The score made its way to LP in 1982 and got reissued on CD in 1988 and again in 2000. The complete score finally got its release in 2010 thanks to Entrada. The two CD set contain new music with the original album as well. The original album is available via iTunes in the USA and that appears to be the only way to get it via streaming. The complete score sadly is out of print on CD and fetches high prices on Amazon and eBay. If you can get hold of it though, it's certainly worth adding to your collection because it's one of the finest action scores and totally surpasses many action soundtracks of today. After the success of First Blood, sequels were inevitable. So before I get to my final thoughts on First Blood, let's have a rundown of the sequels. Rambo First Blood Part 2 was released in 1985. The film was met with very negative reviews from critics, even receiving a Razzie Award for the worst film of the year but was incredibly successful, making 300 million worldwide, and made a killing on VHS. Its simple premise of Rambo returning to Vietnam to save many prisoners of war inspired many knockoffs during the 80s. This movie really kick-started the Rambo franchise with cartoons, toys and video games. The film was written by Stallone and James Cameron. It was later revealed that Cameron provided the action, and Stallone contributed the political element to the script. As a film, I find it generally very forgettable. I think its plot is wafer thin and it looks inherently cheap, it has inconsistent photography with loads of wobbly day for night shots and lacks the polish of first blood. The film is all about action and it certainly delivers, but it's very silly and over the top and the sense of realism is totally lost. Stallone himself rates it as the worst of the series, feeling it was too cartoonish. Three years later we got Rambo 3. John Rambo heads out to Afghanistan in order to rescue his former military commander and longtime friend Colonel Troutman from the Soviets. The film attempted to speak of its time, referencing the conflict between Russia and Afghanistan. Originally directed by Russell McCahey, who at the time was known for his work on music videos and the recent film Highlander, he left the production two weeks into shooting due to creative differences and was replaced by second unit director Peter McDonald, who had worked on part two, shooting a lot of the aerial footage. Peter holds the film together and provides some really impressive action sequences. The film is definitely a step up over part 2 for me. It looks far more polished and has a better slice of characters, but ultimately the plot really just fades into the background as the endless action takes over, which is fine for some people. But it often just descends into Rambo being this one-man army who can take on a hundred troops and barely break a sweat. About four weeks prior to the movie's premiere, the Russians withdrew from Afghanistan and they were no longer at war with the country. The director felt that this turn of events had hurt the movie's box office returns because the idea of the Russians being the primary villains in this movie were no longer really believable. Despite those issues and in hindsight its political message may be a bit controversial, it did well at the box office making $189 million. But its bloated budget of $63 million cut its profit margins compared to First Blood and Part 2. 20 years after the release of Rambo 3, Stallone was back, and this time directing it himself. The fourth entry has the bland and unoriginal title of just Rambo, or in some countries it's titled John Rambo. The film goes back to the more realistic roots of First Blood, but really amps up the violence. Rambo 3 received a Guinness World Record for the highest death count in a movie, and this one clearly tries to top that. With the advent of CGI, this record is now somewhat redundant. The plot itself is really just a remake of part 2, just changing a few things around, which I don't really have a problem with, as this one introduces some great characters for Rambo to work with. The film is not for the faint-hearted, and doesn't hold back from showing you the horrors of war. I personally think it's the best of the sequels. 
my introduction to First Blood was during my early 20s. I was of course very familiar with the character of Rambo, and played the video games and had a couple of the toys as a kid, but the first movie in the series had always passed me by, and I was most familiar with the sequel and Rambo 3. I thought the series was just fun over the top action movies that had a slice of politics thrown in. I didn't look upon them as high quality productions, but kind of throwaway action features of the 80s. Upon viewing First Blood, it was such a pleasant surprise to me. It was tonally different to the sequels, but also had something more to say than just Rambo going on a shooting spree and killing the bad guys. Obviously the sequels had motivations to get Rambo to take part in the story, but the political element was only there to kickstart the story, and just bookends them to justify why Rambo did what he did. But First Blood didn't portray Rambo as this all-American superhero with unlimited ammo. In this movie you have an individual who has come back from Vietnam and is treated with hostility and no respect for putting his life on the line. He has little money to his name and just wants to be left alone, but is forced to fight back due to the prejudices of the town folk. Rambo is certainly troubled and suffering from the effects of war and the loss of many of his friends and just snaps and thinks he is now back in Vietnam and does everything he can to protect himself. If you look at certain scenes in isolation you could see Rambo as the bad guy but watching everything in context you can clearly notice the films portraying him as sympathetic. Hearing the outbursts of critics against the film and its use of violence, you wonder if they actually watched the movie, but instead just based it on clips or hearsay to point out its negative influence or careless use of violence. The police, especially the sheriff, clearly don't like outsiders and are abusing their positions of authority. They are the villains of the piece, but they are not villains in a traditional sense. The sheriff ends up being Rambo's main villain, he isn't a bad guy at heart, but lets his pride and his position of looking after the town blind him into going too far. The great moment with Teasel as he is cornered by Rambo and he is warned to let it go. Once Rambo flees, Teasel breaks down in tears as he nearly died. So he isn't all macho and is doubting his motives, but continues in his pursuit of Rambo. Brian really does a splendid job with this part and I personally think some of his best moments in the film show Teasel confronted by Troutman. Their ideologies clash and they don't see eye to eye on dealing with Rambo and the situation that is unfolding. Their final face to face moment in the town really demonstrates how good they are as actors and they both have great dialogue to work with. Stallone made the right choice in making Rambo a sympathetic character. The book is far more violent as Rambo goes on a killing spree and ultimately loses his life at the end. I think in a cinematic narrative it would have been difficult to get the audience to be fully invested in the character, but it would be interesting to see if one day someone decided to remake it and follow the book more closely. Ultimately I think that's why it never got off the ground in the early stages of its production with the other studios, as they were trying to stay faithful to the novel. As soon as Rambo is mistreated you are instantly on his side and you want him to escape and get his freedom. He is a man of few words and Stallone makes sure what he says is important and defines the character so we know what's going on in his head without him monologuing or trying to explain his actions to someone in great detail. With the changes to the ending Stallone gave Rambo this wonderful and emotional speech to Troutman as he finally breaks down and shows the emotions he has been hiding since he got back from Vietnam. This scene is not in the book and really demonstrates that Stallone is a great writer when he's on top form. The author revealed in the movie's commentary that this moment spoke to a lot of Vietnam vets who felt lost once they came back and couldn't speak up and the film did that for them. There was a slight humorous side to this scene. As Rambo becomes hysterical Stallone's voice hits a high pitch. You can't help but be moved by the horrors of war that he witnessed. Director Ted Kotcheff and cinematographer Andrew Laszlo do a superb job of the framing and lighting. The film has this earthy colour palette and tries to push a natural look. The forest looks hazardous and cold but kind of replicates the deep jungles of Vietnam, making Rambo feel very much in his element. With the cinemascope format the director makes great use of the aspect ratio, showing off wide vistas of the locations and nothing feels claustrophobic. It's like a big movie despite its modest budget. So many great movies came out in 1982 and First Blood is certainly in the top 5 of that year for me. It's an action movie played straight and has a strong emotional side to it, balancing it out with drama and action. It hits all the right points to make a very satisfying movie. I think all the elements such as performance, direction and Jerry Goldsmith's score create this consistent level of quality. Aside from the early 80s fashion it's hardly dated, it doesn't rely on visual effects as everything is done for real so it has this timeless feel to it. 
I don't think First Blood has any real problems that would leave me to raise any negative points about its qualities. I think its running time is perfect. It's a tightly edited movie that isn't baggy, it gets across all the points it needs to tell its story, and for the audience to get invested and has a great explosive ending that doesn't border on the ludicrous. It isn't bogged down with too many characters and keeps everything focused around Teasel, Troutman and Rambo. They all have different ways of thinking, and never all truly sync with what they want. It's a bit like politics, they can't agree and the compromise is Teasel getting injured and Rambo giving up due to being outnumbered. If you're going to watch a Rambo film, you really need to watch First Blood. The sequels are fun and silly, but don't really make much of an impact compared to First Blood. Rambo 4 does make great efforts to return to a realistic nature, but ultimately its story doesn't stand up. The first movie in the long running series demonstrated that there was more to Stallone than just being a boxer, who had a low IQ and a heart of gold. He did something that isn't very common in the film industry, ended up playing two iconic characters on the big screen that have lasted for years. Attention all civilians. For your own safety, please evacuate the streets immediately. Remain indoors until you receive further instructions. We found Rambo's body. As a matter of fact, it stole an army truck, blew up a gas station the other side of town. Why don't you forget what you're thinking and clear out what you can? Get the fuck out of here, Troutman, and you take your advice with you. When I talked to you earlier this afternoon, you knew he was still alive, didn't you? I suspected. Yeah, sure. Sure, that's why you stuck around. You trained. You taught him how to get out of places like that cave. He's not going to get out of this place. Teasel, you and all your men couldn't handle him before. Now, what makes you think you can handle him now? Because God knows what damage he's prepared to do. You're going to die, Teasel. Everybody dies. <laughs> If you enjoyed the video, you can find more on my YouTube channel, and also you can follow me on Twitter. If you want to help support the channel, you can donate through Patreon and receive monthly perks such as updates on the latest news on my channel, early access to reviews and commentaries before they go live on YouTube. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going. Thank you.